Number 38. Write the Lewis structure for the diatomic molecule P2, an unstable form of phosphorus found in high temperature phosphorus vapor. Okay, so we're getting started and we're going to learn how to draw Lewis structures for covalent compounds. And just know that Lewis structures are always for covalent compounds. So we're just talking about atoms that are non-metals, and that's why I only gave you a very, very, very limited space for the periodic table, right, a limited uh, elements found in the periodic table, because majority of, of elements on the periodic table are metals. And since covalent compounds are only um, non-metals, we only need a little subsection of our periodic table. Okay, now I also want to say that a lot of teachers and professors may teach Lewis structures differently. This is basically up to for discussion as to the, the proper way of learning Lewis structures. There really is none. It's just what makes it simple for you guys to understand. So over the years, I have found out a foolproof Lewis, Lewis structure method that works majority of the time. And it's very, very simple. So I'm going to always teach my Lewis structures like this. And if you do this method on your tests and quizzes, your teacher or professor should accept this way, but I would always just double check with your professor. Okay, so let's get to it. We want to know how to draw the Lewis structure for P2. So I'm just going to draw it over here, P2. All right, so the first um, thing to do in your Lewis structures is to write down a blueprint for your atoms. So just, you know, arrange your atoms as they would look. In this case, though, we only have two phosphorus, so, and we know that we're going to be, you know, binding them together. So I'm just going to put one P over here and one P over here. So that basically ends number one. The next thing, when you're done with your blueprint, is you want to draw valence electrons around each atom. So we need to know how many valence electrons phosphorus has. Well, phosphorus has five valence electrons. So I'm just going to write them nice around each phosphorus, and you will write them for as many phosphorus you have. So in this case, I have two. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. And I'll do the other one in a different color. One, two, three, four four, five. It does not matter where you start. So you could have started at the bottom and worked your way up. It, it does not matter. Just as long as you have five dots around each phosphorus. So two is done. Now, the next thing is you're, for, you're only going to bond single bonds between atoms. And remember, a single bond is two electrons. And that's how you make a single bond. So this electron and this electron will come together to make a single bond. So I'm just going to erase these two and I will form a single bond. And you know what? I will signify that there was one electron here and there is one electron here. So now you will just act as this, this was two electrons. And now with the bond, that signifies that both of these atoms, so this phosphorus and this phosphorus, will share the two electrons. So that's it. We just drew our single bond. We don't draw any more as of right now. And now we will check outer atoms for octet. An octet generally means eight electrons. There are exceptions, but if I see the exceptions, I will let you guys know. Now, in this case, there's, there's no central atom. It's just both outer atoms, right? The phosphorus and the phosphorus are acting as outer atoms. And let's see how many electrons we have. We should have an octet. We should have eight electrons if we're done. So let's see. This phosphorus has two, four, five, six electrons. Do you see how I did that? So I count these two for this atom. So this one has two, four, six electrons. And this phosphorus, if we did the counting, two, three, four, five, six. So they both have six. They don't have eight so this would be a no. So that means you will add multiple bonds if needed. So now I'm going to start making multiple bonds. So because I can do this on the computer, I'm going to start making multiple bonds, which means that electrons will start coming into the center to try to make more bonds. And remember, you could have a max up to three bonds. So you could have a single, which is one, 
a double, which is two lines, and a triple, which is three lines, and each come from a pair of electrons. So I'm going to pull this electron over here. I'm going to pull this electron over here, and they're going to make a, another bond. And in total, it would be a double bond. So I'm going to make the double bond, and now I'm going to check again. Always check for your outers to see if you have the octet. Now let's see how many electrons this phosphorus has. Two, four, six, seven. Mm, that's not eight. And the same thing for this one. Two, four, six, seven. Mm. So I got to do it again. You keep, you know, doing the last step until you get the octet. So you just keep adding multiple and multiple bonds until you get the octet. There are exceptions for, for the most part, this works out. So I see that this electron is unpaired and this electron is unpaired. So they would probably want to be paired. They definitely want to be paired. So this guy is going to go over here and this guy is going to go over here. And now they're going to make another bond. And now let's just see. Two, four, six, eight. That's the octet for the phosphorus on the left. Two, four, six, eight. That's the octet for the phosphorus on the right. So now I just like to clean it up. So I'm going to put all these in the middle between them. And usually you try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So these two electrons and these two electrons would be on the side just to make it look nice and pretty. Now you're just kind of like, you know, making it nice. And that's it. Now they both have eight electrons each because they're sharing these three. Anytime that you make a bond, it's sharing. So they're sharing six electrons, two, four, six, and they have one lone pair each. So this would be the Lewis structure and you are done. Number 38 is done. So all we have to do is just memorize these steps and you guys will be golden for Lewis structures, but there are tons of problems coming up that will help you guys out and I will be there every step of the way. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If it did, let your classmates know that this awesome service exists. Anybody who can benefit should benefit and hopefully we get the word out. So thank you guys for that. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys all in number 39. Have an awesome day. Happy studying.